Hello, 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 how are you? How's your life? How you doing? Welcome to our Online Memory Afternoon episode 106. How's it going out there? It's a bit gray, it's a bit overcast here in Colchester. Is it fine with you? Ding, dang, do, what's happening with you? Oh no, that sounded really cheesy. Why did that come from my brain to my mouth? Sorry about that. I need to have a word with myself. We've got a lovely show for you this afternoon. Coming up, we will be joined by our co-hosts, my co-host, the wonderful Jeanette and Tom. Um, we have kind of like a pet animal themed week. Yeah, 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 I know. It's crazy, right? Um, we've got the retro raffle, as always, alongside Jeanette's poem of the week. That's probably the longest running thing. I was talking about it the other day. 106 times have we done that? Have we really? No. <laughs> crazy. Uh, memory of the week, of course. More pet talk. We have a wonderful guest um, via London from Glasgow, di live and direct, uh, Neve is going to be joining us and going to be singing beautiful songs and chatting about her life in general, um, about, uh, yeah, about what's happening in a musical world. We have a small feature. Oh, should I say it? Yeah, let's say it. Let's say it. I'm thinking I'm talking to myself here. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to myself. Let's, we've got Small Dog of the Week. Yes, a new feature, our first of the week um, this month. Small dog of the week. Um, think about it. What one would you have? Mm, mm. Give us some suggestions and we might not do it. Jeanette's poem of the week, blah, blah, blah. Do, do, do. Let's welcome Jeanette and Tom because I don't know why I'm fumbling my words today and I'm a bit rubbish. There's Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Hi. How are you doing? Hello. All right. We'll help you with your words. Yeah. We'll yeah. make up new ones. You're we'll good at words. Ones you? Yeah, you're good at words, you and Tom. Tom says hello on the chat. Hello, Tom. Tom, you are good at words. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, you know how to spell things, I'd imagine. Small. No, I don't. I'm really bad like at the, the, you, I bet Yeah, you know small words. That. Small words are good. You can spell cat. Words of one syllable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the longest word you can spell? Oh, if I ask you to. Oh, oh. Um, Anti... And in, in, oh, hang on, anti establishment errors. Yeah, that. <laughs> what one's that? Anti establishment. Anti disestablishmentarianism. Oh, That's my the long, God. longest word I ever learned at school. I might be. Would supercalifragilistic expialidocious, so that'd be longer. That's made up. That's a made up word. No, it's, it's a true word. No, it's in made the dictionary. Up, it's made up. Made up. No. Made up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mary Poppins wasn't real. Don't don't oh. mess with me so early on a Friday. <laughs> Talking silly. Oh silly. Did you learn your London accent from Dick Van Dyke? Yes. Oh blimey. Yeah. And I can and I can he taught me how to dance. Um yeah, oh he can dance. Yeah. I can't he was also me. born in Hackney, wasn't he? Absolutely. Dick Van Dyke, uh, he was the former mayor of Hackney. He rose to prominence mm. after a fashion. Um, I didn't like him when he was just a councillor because he was a bit tough on people. <laughs> and he was anti littering, though, wasn't he? That was yeah, good. he was downtrodden on the poor people of Hackney, and I didn't like that. Anyway, how's your week's been? Mm, yeah, good. Yeah, good. I'm, good. I'm a bit Anything rushed today. today. Things, yeah. things have, um, what's happening? So I've had a busy week and I had a gig at the weekend, which was brilliant. Um, sad you know about the loss of our monarch that's yep. sad um it hasn't affected me too much though and my gig didn't get cancelled unlike a lot of other people's um but i've just been working a lot and today i'm in a rush and i'm dressed very smartly because one of my clients has decided that i now have to go to all of his sales meetings with him he's and tuning in today from somewhere near somewhere called brandon near thetford and i've rushed back <laughs> so yeah well you look great you look Thanks. strong, strong look, strong look, quite strict. <laughs> Power. Power. Well, it's, Power. Yeah, it's, it's a white linen shirt with red trousers. Red trousers. No, that was a mistake. Red trousers. Yeah. Oh no, they're, they're um, 
hang on, I'll show you the bottoms because they're no, a bit short. No. And I've, oh, I've got knees. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, my. oh, look, you've got Mary uh, Poppins shoes on. Oh, they're, <laughs> they're knees. Nice, they're nice. Nice. And I found them in the cupboard. And so that's the thing when your daughter moves out and leaves all her good stuff. Mm. So could I think could you not find things. trousers long enough, though? Well, these are called capri pants. So they show a bit of ankle. Oh, <laughs> it's fashion, Tom. Have you heard of that? No, no. Well, you, know, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you wearing brown trousers? Got and shorts. A brown top? Got shorts on. <laughs> You're quite lucky that you can get in the clothes. My my son's left some clothes at home, but I look like the Incredible Hulk when I put the trousers on. Oh, yeah, I don't wear a clothes, just her shoes. <laughs> oh, just her shoes. She didn't give you the red trousers. No, no, they're mine. No, respect, respect is due. But oh. she's left Converse boots here and everything. I wear all of Converse them. Converse boots, I've heard yeah, of them. Yeah, really nice Converse. Very, very up. Baseball boots. Should, should say hello to Keith. Hello, Keith. How are you? Um, and Steve, Steve from North Carolina. Hello, one and all. Steve, thanks for tuning in. I think it's kind of early there in the morning there, Stevie. Stevie, you don't mind me calling you Stevie, do you? Um, I wonder what time it is there, Steve. Tell us, um, as we do the retro raffle. It's the Retro Raffle, it's coming to your screen. It's the Retro Raffle, never has been seen. Come on, come on. It's the Retro Raffle, and it's coming, it's coming to your screen. Oh yeah. It's coming, it's coming to your screen. Retro Raffle, Facebook Live. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just confusing the autofocus. <laughs> Where Steve is, Steve Brady, uh, Mr. Shock Pop himself, a fine DJ and a fine gentleman. It's 8 a.m. Imagine turning us on at 8 a.m. I'll be great then with the breakfast show. Oh, okay, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's a bit scary. I've had a rough couple of nights, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've had a rough couple of years, to be honest. <laughs> Call it a decade. Um yeah, sorry about that, Steve. Um, hi to my favorite three, says the lovely Christine Jackson. Chrissy, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. So here's a question for everyone, including the lovely Tom and uh, also the lovely Jeanette and uh, Mary Poppin shoes um, and red trousers. If you missed them earlier, what a treat. Um, can you name... Oh, I've got to give you the prizes. I've got to give prizes. Okay, so prizes, I saw... Dirty Barry in the week, and he had a job lot of old um, animal pet clothing that you can put on your cat or your dog. <laughs> These were the new versions. That one doesn't look, you can't see that one as well. There's oh. one there. Um, that's cat or dog. And um, I kind of like that one. Maybe I'll, I'll lose a couple so we can see them properly. Dinosaur outfits. Dinosaur outfits are the way to go to dress your yeah. animals. Um, let's see how that looks better. Um, then they're only slightly soiled. So, you know, I, I'll do them with Corio rather than Royal Mail because um, they just throw them all about anyway. Um, the question uh, on this week's Retro Raffle is, can you name any famous animals who appeared in TV or film for a chance to wear those beautiful outfits on your pet animal? Not on your tortoise, though, Chris, because we didn't. I didn't find any for tortoises. <laughs> Chrissy's got a tortoise. Um, who, who were fa any famous animals? Dog, cat, swimming sort of animal. There's a very famous one from Colchester. Oh. Do you remember? Oh, oh, you might not know that. Oh, oh. oh. there Is used there to be a TV show when I was little yeah. called Dactari. I remember the name. It was obviously a long time before my time. Yeah. Um, it was before colour television, probably. I thought Dactari was like a hair product, like a brill cream. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, your hair looks... Yeah, nice and shiny, your hair. Memory, you use memory, Dactari. Memory. <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> that was my memory of the week. Dactari, TV show. Dactari, and, um, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there was a, an animal on there that yeah. came from Colchester Zoo. And it was, oh. uh, it was a safari kind of program. 
No, I'll give you a clue. Its name was lion. Clarence. <laughs> it's a lion. It was a lion. Was it a lie? Yeah. Um, called Clarence. Keith says Flipper. Yeah, that was the one, the swimmy one I was thinking of. Flipper. I think Flipper was possibly Australian by birth. Um, not from Colchester Zoo. Wendy got, has got a memory like a champion because she says Rebel, the Alsatian from Champion the Wonder Horse. Oh. Champion, champion the Wonder Horse. Wonder Horse. <laughs> I remember oh, the song. I don't remember Rebel the Alsatian. Oh, what a no. memory to have. You know, these are the times to be alive, aren't they? Uh, Steve says Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion. Was that That's the one? It. That's the one. Yeah, from Dactari. From Dactari? Oh, Steve. Yeah, it was a national, well, international TV show. International. I'm just putting some yeah. cream on my elbow because I realise it's very dry, very dry. Um, Christine says Tarka the Otter. I've heard of that one. And Skippy the kangaroo. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's a lot more than I realised. Lassie. Lassie. Yes, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, Lassie uh, was pretty cool. Was Lassie kind of like um, the animal version of the Waltons? <laughs> well, no, it would um, – I don't know how, but it would somehow, through the power of mind maybe, it would tell whoever was looking after it – um, that somebody had fallen down the well and they've, they've, you know, <laughs> they've got to go and get them. You remember? Save them. That kind of thing. I don't know how. It's dog, dog talk. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, rather than a lot of people sort of like a little bit impatient with the week, sort of sad that the Queen's passed, but a little bit impatient. There's queues of people on the news all the time. So I've been watching Hong Kong Fui <laughs> in between sort of doing work and um, or sometimes whilst doing work. And the Waltons. The oh, Waltons, right. yeah, like 1930s wholesome entertainment uh, made in, when would it have been made? In the 70s, I guess? 70s, 80s. Yeah, yeah maybe. I do remember it. That Michael Landon was the um, actor that played um, the lead man, wasn't it? No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm thinking of Little House on the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie. Yeah, he, he, I get the muffin up. Uh, Waltons and Little House on the Prairie. Same thing. Oh, right? I can't deal with him. He was a stud muffin. As a, he was just... <laughs> Crying every episode, he cried. Oh no! I'm what I've got a box set from eBay for the Waltons. It was like two p or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so cheap because nobody watches that stuff, right? Um, anyway, we carry on. Dactari says Steve. Yes, we got that one. Thank you, sir. Elsa the lioness from Born Free. Good call, oh, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Oof, a lot of these animal um, costumes are going to be winging their way around the world. Wendy swoosh, she says the dog that said sausages from that side. <laughs> sausages, sausages. I'm also oh. thinking of the Ross's monkey in Friends. Oh, oh, you're going all modern now. Oh, is that modern? Friends. Oh, yeah, right. far too modern. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be at least 20 years ago. Is oh, that... no, but that's how modern we go. That's we don't go to modern <laughs> now. Nobody, nobody knows about that. It's all too modern. Oh, I right. mean, okay. that's a sign of what you know what it was like in the seventies that we thought a dog that just went sausages, sausages, was entertainment. <laughs> it was, it was brilliant. That's before the internet, and we discovered cats. Yeah, cat videos are great, aren't they? I've just yeah. got to the age now where it's legal um, locally, not internationally, nationally, and maybe to watch cat videos or cats walking like horses. There was one the other day; a cat had grown up around horses that kind of walk like that um, <laughs> which i found very entertaining for many hours the other evening all right those prizes are coming to all of you oh there's still Maybe. more coming in look there's there? still more yeah keith keith has said one wendy said another one. oh yeah keith <laughs> says shep from blue peter yeah is that was john down. oak's dog yeah. was it and petra uh, was um peter Purvis's dog Oh, and Ross's monkey was called Marcel. Of course it was. Of course. I was, was. thinking it's a French name. And I was thinking, is it Henri? No. Marcel? I don't remember. <laughs> so Wendy's name. down. She's down with the kids, isn't she? She uh, yeah. knows all these really modern programs. She yeah, does. she does. She does. She's really with the kids. You two didn't really need to add loads, though. You had a, had a few. I didn't add any. I really feel bad about that, but I'll get over it. You um, came up with the idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, it. isn't it? You had a head start and you still didn't come up with it. Yeah. No, no. I mean, well, 
I want you lot to do the legwork. I've written it down on a paper that I read out. I mean, come on. Um, let's do the memory of the week, moving from one subject to another. Memory, memory, memory of the week. Well, the memory of the week is quite a simple one, I believe. And it says, did you, Tom, Jeanette, our lovely audience tuning in out there um, across the world, um, did you have pets when you were a kid? Jeanette takes off her glasses. She's getting serious with this one. Oh, she was no, too bored to have pets. been up since five o'clock. I was on the road at seven. Oh, she um, can't deal with five. me. Oh, Tom. Yeah, I just my glasses all the time. Um, right, pets. Right, you asking yeah. us first? Yeah, go. Okay. Uh, the first pet I remember was a dog who was completely mad and used to get so excited and jump out so much that we were coming home as a family, like six of us in the car one day, and um, it saw us through the big window and it got so excited and it jumped through the window and oh, died of his injuries. Right. But that was our first pet and he was a dog and he was called Rex. Rex was a good <laughs> name. Rex, King and Prince. Proper dog, big black dog. I don't know what kind. Mm, sorry to hear about that. I barely remember it. <laughs> uh, Tom, to lighten the mood uh, a little, do you, have you, did you have any pets? Uh, we had a, but the first one I remember was a dog as well, a Labrador, uh, but a golden one who was very mad as well, a bit uncontrollable. Too young to have a, a mad dog, I think. Very frustrating. Yeah, ran in front of a car. <sighs> no, he didn't. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> shot by a father no there was a lot of drama and sadness around dogs so when i just realizing yeah so i had it's, a... it's sad though i know when people have pets that die and, and that they actually love those pets that is sad it's, it's like one of your family members when our cat died it was very sad yeah, yeah time yeah i was just gonna say about that but i've decided not to go there i had um my first one i think was a stickleback it was called um stickleback <laughs> um and that only lasted a day after coming home from victoria oh. pond, victoria park's pond and i fed it bread mm, bad yeah. idea that didn't last more than a day then we had um a cat i won't go into that which lovely cat and then my dad brought home um from the pub He'd bought a fox terrier, but uh, who was called Michelle, and she was a lovely dog. But she'd sort of had lots of babies over time, and um, she was a bit tired. And um, we were proud to have her. I saw a few photos of her the other day, but um, yeah, I don't, I because I, I was thinking about it when when I was growing up, most of the dogs that people had were just wild. They'd run around. They weren't on leads. Right. Um, it's you know. Bad. Yeah, they just run around the estate. Most of them weren't on lead. We did have ours on a lead, packs, and packs of wild dogs. Well, not, but there were ones that you wouldn't go near, and there were friendly yeah. ones you knew. Um, and we had a lot of white dog poo in the seventies, of course. <laughs> you don't get now. And I troubled over this for years. I know it's been well trodden on, if it's used yeah. but um, I think it was they ate bones, wasn't it? What, what was that? What because you there's no there's not a white poo revival, is there at the moment? It could be, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Uh, I'll take is that. Is it something they were being fed? Well, you feed them all later. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I've got, I've got to read out these comments because I can't keep up otherwise. Uh, Steve, have you seen the videos of the dogs in the spider costume scaring people on the streets in elevators? Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, I seem to remember that. That was really funny. Um I will look them up again later, Steve. Um, Wendy says, we weren't allowed. My dad says they were a tie. But when I was 17, I went out and got a germ, uh, got a Labrador puppy. And my uh, my dad, I think that's meant to say, loved him dearly. Good ending. Good ending, Wendy. We like that one. Keith says, careful you don't give away your passwords with p pet names. Oh, is that a thing then, Keith Glenn Baker? What was your first pet? Yeah. Cat, cat one, two, three. <laughs> well, do you know what? I'm thinking that there was that game that people used to play. I don't know if I can say this on our family show, but I'm going to give it a go. They say, yeah, what's your, what would have been your porn star name? And if you take your first 
pet's name and the first street that you lived in. And so my porn star name would have been Rex Kendall. Rex Kendall. I, I was Snowy Woodland. I had a big moustache. <laughs> I was Snowy Woodland. Um, Snowy, not Snowy. No, no Snowy. That's what it oh, I like that. <laughs> what were you, Tom? I have no idea. I can't right, don't wish to play in this game. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. The first, what was it again? Pet's name. First pet's name and the first street he lived in when you were born. I don't, I don't know the name of the street. I don't think. Do you not? Had, I don't think it had a name. It was just a kind of hubble, wasn't it? It was, sort of... it was just a dirt track. <laughs> so, what was your first pet's name? Um, um, Bobby. Bobby Dirt. Bobby Dirt Track. Bobby, Bobby Dirt. Dirt Track. That sounds really good. <laughs> That's boring. your porn star name. <laughs> Bobby Dirt Track. It's not the greatest one, but it's, it's got an underlying feel about it. Um, Jeanette really likes this guy. <laughs> she loves it. So I'm much. just waiting for the other people to write in their porn star names now. I think, what have I started? What have you started? Sorry. All right, let's have a go. So, what was your first pet called and what was your first street you lived on called some people didn't live in streets though did they they live well, in avenues flats <laughs> flats tenements yeah oh, palaces um i did have i'll tell you the best pet i had well no the best pet i've got is had is the one i've got which is a greek That's rescue dog who's awesome. just so nice um Love him. but i had a black cat in uh interestingly called blackie um it, I think they were named, it was already named, but um, I used to work as a caretaker on council estates, cleaning up, helping tenants out with their problems. And the cat would follow me absolutely everywhere. If I was sweeping on the yard, it would be sitting in the tree next to me. It literally oh, followed me everywhere. But when I was at home, it didn't bother me too much. It was just like a little stroke and it was happy. Best cat. Nice. Best cat. Well, we've got one now. He's a nice cat. She's kind of small like that. Like, like that. Like, no, I'm like that. Ooh, I remember big. getting, I remember getting a goldfish from the from the uh, fair. Yeah, yes. With with a ping pong ball. Hey. You used to have to get them in oh, a right. bowl. You used to throw the ping pong ball in a bowl. Yes. And, yeah. and we had it for years and years. Yeah, got it in a bag, did you? Yep. I think yeah. my daughter Neve's first pet was um, uh, a goldfish. Uh, yes. Gold, Goldie, gold. <laughs> and she was born in the same road as me. So, so uh, no, I must tell her. <laughs> Goldie Kendall. Well, I've got a. Uh, she uh, had goldfish, gold and silver, eventually. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, we got another one, so it wouldn't be like. Yeah. And yeah. Um, they last for 15 years, which is unheard of for goldfish because we just didn't used to feed them and they survive on that. <laughs> they survive on that, nothing. <laughs> It's weird. We'd, we'd forget to feed them, and it'd be like a week, maybe once a week, we'd feed them, and they—that's what makes them live so long because people overfeed their goldfish. Yeah, I think it's giving them a feeding them at the correct intervals rather than not feeding them Actually, makes them live longer. Four or five days. <laughs> I no food um, makes them live longer. I've got, a, I've got a fish. Imagine how long they would have lived if you hadn't fed them at all, Janet. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be going to once a month. He'll be going today. <laughs> probably be prime minister or something um i've got a fish that's about uh, probably about that long oh you can't even see it because we're not on full screen it's a it's probably like 10 12 inches long it's a plec and it's over 25 years old and it's called roger and you've got that in your pond no not in a pond in a in a tank indoors in a tank yeah have you yeah swear swear I've, is it new I'm thinking it's quite a long time since I've been in your house, but I don't remember there being a no, fish we, we just don't let you in the house. That's the key. <laughs> not, not to that part of the house. Not to that part. Yeah. Of the house. I've seen it loads of times. So. Yeah, the animal sound. Well, you word. <laughs> no, we had a we had a party last week and sort of um everybody came except Jeanette. Yeah, no, it was a family party. Otherwise, I wouldn't um, have invited you. <laughs> um, <laughs> They had um it was lovely to see all the family join. I mean yeah. Yeah, shut I'm, up. I'm so glad you could make it, Tom. Um, <laughs> all the little kids were watching Roger waiting for him to come out to eat his courgette that's on a knife under a rock, like so it doesn't move. And um in the end he was a bit shy, so I sent them videos of Roger. Yeah, um 
he was born. I bought him in Kilburn Market. Um, twenty-eight to, tw to sorry, twenty-five, twenty-six, maybe, uh, maybe about twenty-five to twenty-six years ago. Have you oh. never fed him? <laughs> no. That, that uh, jet, the only that time we fed the other day. I shouldn't go on because we are going on, and we will go on every week. But um, <laughs> Jeanette's kind of right in that you don't you don't want to feed him too much, basically. So he does like a courgette and he likes peas. If you put peas in there cooked, without uh, take the shell off, they're gone in seconds. The courgettes last a bit longer. Um, but I don't, I don't feed him ridiculously so. He's well lean, isn't it? In it. Is are they the, one of those fish that stick to the side of? He's kind of like that. He's got a sucker. He's got a sucker, but he uses it for other purposes. Yeah. Rather than just when he was young, he used to take the algae off the side of the tank. Now he don't bother. He just wants courgettes or peas. He's got people for that now. I know, and I'm his man slave. Um, <laughs> Jean says, "Hello, parents had a dog when I was 13 years old, golden retriever puppy, very intelligent, which hadn't been vaccinated properly, so we lost. Uh, then we had a Dalmatian. Later on, we had another golden retriever." I'd be Rosie Waldron. Is that what does that mean? That's that... her, her name, her special name. Oh, her special name. Movies. I'm losing my marbles. <laughs> Rosie Waldron. Hello, Rosie Waldron. Um, That's quite nice. She had goldfish from the fair. Goldfish from the fair. Remember to try and save it by blowing it to its mouth with a straw. <laughs> oh, you don't like you don't like animals, dear. Just inflate it, wouldn't it? <laughs> just blow mouth, out. Mouth, Dad, it's, Dad, it's a puffer fish. It's a puffer fish now, Dad. Jeez, <laughs> jeez. <A> balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Christine had a zoo. Rabbits, dog, guinea pig, mice, tortoise, ducks, chickens, budgie, goldfish. Wow. Mm. Wow, Christine. Far, pet farm. Yeah, and Chrissy used to um, foster children, babies as well. So she had a full house going on. Yeah. Good on you, Chrissy. Good on you too, Jean, and everybody else just made a comment as well, of course. Um, shall we have, have a word with our special guest? Shall we? Shall we invite her onto the screen? Let's do that. Let's invite Neve all the way from London. Hi, Neve. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. We're good. How are you? How's your yeah. life? Yeah, good. It's kind of clearer skies now in London. So good. good report. Yeah, we're getting, yeah. We're getting, we're getting there. Sunshine. Yeah. How about yeah. pets in your life? Have you had pets? I had, we had this really weird cat. I'm such a cat person. But when I was like, I think we were like, I must have been six or seven at the time. I think my mum inherited this cat from a friend that like couldn't look after it anymore. So the cat was just really neurotic like wanted to be near you but as soon as you looked at it would like sprint away just like oh. completely run away and he would always well the he she thing was a whole topic so the whole time I was growing up we called the cat Victor and I thought it was a boy named Victor and then like two years ago I found out it, it was actually a girl named Victoria but we called it Victor for short oh, man. <laughs> so it's this total mystery character in my life and it would like run up my chimney at night and meow well, my dad what? would be much happier if it was a metaphor because he used to swear like bloody murder, like get down from the chimney, which would just scare it more. And it would and just stay up there. And we, it would go up higher and it would just oh. meow down the chimney all night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. That would really echo as well. <laughs> exactly. It was like everyone could hear it. It was anyway. Um, so that, yeah, my only real pet, apart from goldfish, I did have goldfish. Mm. Um, and actually I had this goldfish in a big bowl on like, I don't know why anyone trusted it to be in my room. And this is why. So this huge gold goldfish bowl in my room with a goldfish in it. And one time I was getting my guitar out of from behind it it was kind of stuck beside the cupboard and I like yanked it so hard that it smashed the bowl oh. and it went everywhere oh, it's terrible oh. oh no did you use a straw on the goldfish like Jean? <laughs> the fish did survive actually his little fin oh, wow. was like cut by the glass oh, but this is... persevered oh, oh this like is deep. Oh, God, yes. 
Um, yeah. Oh, I'm glad it survived. Jean said she um, buried, um, she had children, so they buried the goldfish in the garden, which is what you oh, do. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, was it? There's also the sort of flushing it down the toilet thing, but I suppose that's much less respectful of the poor it's, fish, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a bit like the alligator stories, isn't it? You know, the crocodiles oh. that people put down their loo in. It's going to come back, yeah. Florida, you know. That actually, mm. um, uh, my wife's granddad did put a snail or two down his guard um, sink uh, toilet, and they grew into absolutely massive, massive snails. That's a horror story. I can't imagine anything worse than I can't imagine what insect would be worse being bigger than a snail. Like that's like the worst insect to be bigger. Although I don't know if a snail is technically an insect, but yeah. that gives me nightmares. That will give me nightmares. Yeah. Now. Well, sorry about that. Later they did um, <laughs> they did fry them up with a little bit of garlic and uh, parsley. Very nice. Very nice. Um, no, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I, w I wouldn't eat a snail. Oh no. Leave I was it. just in France and I saw them in the supermarket. I was just oh, like, wow, no, nah, just can't. Yeah, just like in the sort of where what it was like the deli section, and they were just kind of out. Oh, no, nah, man, no, nah, not my Let's cup go, of tea. go. Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Each to their own, but Each not my their cup own. Of tea. Yeah. <laughs> so you're you're here because you're brilliant. We invited oh, you on because you. you're brilliant. And all day long, you probably say to yourself, "I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant." Where's that? That's all I do. Mirror, mirror. Yeah. Um, really time-consuming task. I know, I know. For, for emerging artists who are brilliant, they have to. It's a part of the the thing they've got to do, isn't it? Daily. <clears throat> yep. We sign a contract. It's like you have to do it. <laughs> well, you're here from the music world, and you're going to sing us a song or two. You, well, or three actually. What are you going to start with? Yeah. I'm going to start with um, a song called, although I'm I'm very bad with song names, I constantly change change my mind. Um, I think I'm almost certain this will be called Fast Patterns, but sometimes on stage I forget and I call it Accountable. So yeah, many different worlds of this song. But this song got mastered today, so it's all yes. finished. So as a celebration... I will play it. Um, it won't be coming out sort of anytime soon, but it will be coming out as part of my album, which will be out next year at some point. So it will be in the world as as of today. We know that. <laughs> Lovely. We look forward to hearing it. Fast patterns or otherwise. Um, Martha, <laughs> yay. Um, let's get out of your way and let you do your thing, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the show and hopefully not the last. It's Neve. Thank you. Too long that you've ignored the blood rushing past your phone. I think you've been too strong, you're getting old. Just know the act is for no one. And it's always the same with you, you're getting old, you're getting old. Fast patterns, so learning. You don't admit it, you're a home. It's always the same with you. You get no, you get no. Fast patterns, so learning. You don't admit it, you're a home. What gave you the right to dwell? What made you so sure that this is hell? Who told you that time will tell? I need to know. Oh, 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 oh you come. I think that a face doesn't age if you see it every day. I think that your eyes did start to glaze, your feelings faded away. And I didn't notice, and it's always the same with you, you 
get no, come and get no. Fast patterns, so learning. You don't admit it, you're alone. It's always the same with you. You get no, come and get no. Fast patterns, so learning. You don't admit it, you're alone. What gave you the right to dwell? What made you so sure that this is hell? Who told you that time will tell? I need to know. I know you come. Excuses, you should have known better. You're not a sad case, you're crucial, my friend. But the fire and the smoke, we were really young. Why am I still angry? Why am I still angry to you? Oh, what gave you? to dwell what made you so sure that this is hell who told you that time will tell i need to know oh, oh, oh. no oh, oh, oh. no so scared to tell open up to the people that love you and only care that you are well I need to know and I hope you come Thank you. Oh, that was gorgeous. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> I only hope that um, so beautiful voice. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. I only hope that the um the clarity of the picture and the sound that I had here is is the same for people at home. It's not always because it goes for lots of different compression factors. But that was lovely, Neve. Oh, thank you very much. It's nice yeah. to play. I never get to play my nylon guitar for people because. It's such a hard thing to like play on stage because of making and boring technical reasons. So yeah, nice to do it. If yeah. only again. lovely, really nice. Yeah, do you um... adapt easily from the wider neck to a, a smaller? Um, I think because the strings are softer, I find it um easy. I've been talking to a lot of my friends lately about it. I always write on a nylon. A lot of my friends say the same thing. Um, and actually this this specific nylon um features very, really heavily throughout the album. It's kind of the guitar that I record with because it's like a softer sound. Mm. Um and actually I bought myself this specific one because my friend had one that his like mum used to own and it's like 50 quid off eBay or something but his mum had this one gathering dust and then we used it for a bit and I was like oh, I must have it it's just got such a nice like worn warm oh tell us what is it what what brand is it um so it's kind of me in terms of singer songwritery stuff like doing all the writing and things but I have a brilliant band behind me a very talented musicians and um, we've recently gone from a four piece to a five piece so until this coming gig we've been me on guitar my incredibly talented friend Maz on electric guitar and backing vocals my friend Alex on bass and my friend Greg on drums they're all amazing and um, we're absolutely instrumental in the recording of like every song um, and then we've had a recent addition to the band whose name is also Alex so that just gets confusing um, on keys um, and she kind of will swap keys and guitar duty with me on stage because I'm trying to bring my keys playing back into the live set because it's like that was actually the first instrument I learned and I record on piano quite a lot so I'm trying to bring it back into the live show a little bit more. What do you write on? What, what instrument do you usually go to when you're writing a song? 
always guitar it's so funny even though like piano is my first instrument it feels piano feels very like the kind of glitter I'll put on tracks but like the core of the song always happens with just a guitar in my bedroom and all, playing around on different tunings I'm a big tuning stickler it makes for a terribly difficult live show I've mean, done some shows where I have retuned to some capacity between every song <laughs> I'm working around it now but it was it was a bad habit <laughs> you need to get seven guitars I suppose on stage um all at the right yes. um, and then one of those racks those lovely racks that they have so what what was the guitar that you bought what is the nylon string guitar so it's called a menina a what? and that is all a menina so it's spelled m-e-n-i-n-a and that's all i know about it it's an italian i think it's um not italian a spanish style guitar it says made in spain inside it but yeah my friend had one i used it to record and then that friend needed it back and i had to have my own a menina <laughs> yeah Very a menina. I've, I've heard of the name before um not I've... a lot not a lot though I mean, because I play, because uh, of my fingers, I, I moved over to a, a nylon string guitar and I write everything, all my songs, because I, I do it's music, um, on a on a tiny uh, Cordoba mini guitar. Oh, uh, wow. So no, like travel guitar, it's just so nice to write on. Um, so I, Yeah, just I, to pick I, it up and, you know, they're so lightweight and I think the softness of those types of guitars is like, uh, yeah, very easy to write on, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, we'll chat more, Neve. We're going to go off and do a little ting, and we'll be back with you shortly, ladies and gentlemen, for the moment at least. The wonderful Neve. Bye. There she goes. Um, that was. Gorgeous. I look forward to her album coming out next year. Oh yeah, uh, single oh, coming. We'll talk more about that when she comes back. Get wow. some links up. Um, not links. The um, <laughs> not the stuff. Or whatever. Yeah, not that. Not that. Um, Jean said, great sound. I should have mentioned it while Neve was on. Great sound and picture. Um, and she said, you should call them Alexa on second thoughts. That might be worse. Yeah. Hey, Alexa. Um, anyway, we've got another feature, and it's called Small Dog of the Week. Small dog, big personality. Small dog, fit it in your shoe. Small dog, thinks it's a big dog. Small dog, likes to do a poo poo poo. A poo poo poo. Ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. It's the small dog. Oh. <laughs> oh Jono, well done. That's another good one. <laughs> I had to get another small dog in the room because I couldn't do the yap yap yap. So um that was my wife um, <laughs> last night. She came in from work and I says that she said, Have you done have you got it all sorted? And I said, Well, I've kind of got to do a, a jingle for small dog of the week. And so she sat sat let me down. And uh, she started going through it and she said, I can do some barking noises in the back if you want. <laughs> I'm like, of course I want. So, <laughs> Oh, she's got such good ideas. She's lovely. Yeah, ten minutes and done. Yes, my whole albums are like that. <laughs> ten minutes and done. I should call that, uh, I should call that my next album. Anyway, Small Dog of the Week this week. I've got some information here that I need to read out to you. Um, up first is there's two contenders. If you've not watched the show before, two contenders, and you vote on what one you think is your favourite small dog of the week. First up, we have the Jack Russell. Jack Russell was uh, developed, it says here, developed in England some 200 years ago to hunt foxes. Um, it's also known as the Parson uh, Russell Terrier. Oh, it's lively, it's independent, and it's a clever little dog. They're charming and affectionate, but they're also a handful to train and manage for ex experienced dog parents only. That's what it says there. It, also, I've got here, in many parts of the Midlands, licensed premises still keep a jar of curly whirlies behind the bar as they believe giving one to a Jack, Jack Russell brings them luck. Jack Russell's <laughs> like... Jack Russell's like oven cooked chips, fidget spinners, and the early music of meatloaf. It's just from the internet. I don't know. I don't know. But um, that's the first one. And then I'll bring the second one. Little Jack Russell, Parsons Terry, I'll take you down and I'll bring you forth the Chihuahua. Chihuahua. 
The Chihuahua is a Mexican breed of toy dog. It's named after the Mexican state of Chihuahua. I don't know if I saying that right, but uh, anyway. And it's among the smallest of all dog breeds. Um, Chihuahuas remain a rarity, remained a rarity, rare, 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 rarity until the 20th century, when they came to prominence as part of the early shows of the legendary showman and stuntman Evil Knievel, wherein they would attempt to jump over a long row of hot dogs without eating any of them. I think that was kind of that was the warm up. The warm up, get it? Um, they are known to like doner kebab, watching people knitting, and listening to the works of Claude Debussy. There we go. So that's the two small dogs of the week. Have you any preference, Tom Hardy? Uh, I think I quite like the Jack Russell. Um, yeah. Because they, they play football very well as well. They're good with little balls, aren't they? Even big balls. <laughs> I, don't know, I mean, any balls. Yeah, any balls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um they're more snooker. of a manly dog i suppose you could say yeah. they're good at snooker and actually there's the cue that that yeah. jack russell below me is holding it <laughs> exactly um very good at billiards also mm -hmm. um, it's just like a wand <laughs> it's also good at spells like harry yeah. potter yeah um so you're a jack russell fan tom yeah. have you had dogs tom well, only only one. I mean, my parents used to have dogs. I mean, I, I had that one very early on, and I've never really Not sort of gone. They're, they're a bit too much work. I'm a lazy person, and mm -hmm. dogs are too much work, whereas cats, easy. Let them get, get on with it. Yeah, so. to a degree. That's that's true. Um, yeah. How about you, Lady Jeanette? Um, looking lovely in your white garb, matching with... Going with contrast in the red lipstick and the black glasses and the blonde, <laughs> blonde hair, very nice, very strong. Thank um, you very much. As I've left my normal glasses in my handbag. Oh, I could I just say, Tom, also like a glow on your head, your beard yeah. is gorgeous. It's uh, yes. other things, other things of niceness. Do you know, um, early dogs, dog pets, favorites? I'm all? not really a dog person apart from Chauncey. And um, if I had to choose between these two, see, they're both little yappy, bouncy things, but I quite like the longer fur. It's prettier and it looks more like a cat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like Tom. I, I'm, you don't I'm, want a chihuahua. I'm not lazy. I'm just too selfish to look after a dog. For me, it's just, it's children or pets. And I had an even, we had goldfish. And, and then, you know, that's that. I, <laughs> I've still got a child, even though she's not here, but I don't need a pet. Ladies and gentlemen, my two co-hosts, Lazy and what was the other one? Um, selfish. selfish. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it's understandable. It's like you have to invest a lot of time to sort of um, have a look pet. Up, particularly to a look dog. after them properly, don't you? Yeah, well, yeah. you have to get up early in the morning and take them out for walks, even if it's raining. That's not right. That's fine. It's, yeah. a, it's a training. You need to have proper, like dogs need to be trained, don't they? I, yeah. I, really, I really dislike dogs that aren't sort of looked after and yeah you have friends. to pick up their doings yeah have I a poo 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 one. um yeah. yeah well you just get doggy bags from wilkinson Easy. on a roll they're the best ones wow. in town <laughs> no. you just get yeah. a poo hoover that's what you oh, people... is, that what... <laughs> is that a thing <laughs> people have real contraptions and i just think it's ridiculous <laughs> i was just making so it up right. right. sure somebody has a poo hoover don't they someone tom it's the internet. Go, you'll find it later. All night you can watch Poo Hoovers. Uh, <laughs> don't go too mean, deep into the dark web on that no, one. I'm not, I'm not going. Um, <laughs> Wendy says, oh, my goodness, did you call your wife a dog? No, but she did a good dog impression on that jingle. Yeah, she, you, sort of, you sort of did call her a dog. Did I? But, uh, but it, was, it wasn't, yeah. She played the role... Yes, in Am it, it, didn't, it didn't come across like that, sort of. Thing. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she doesn't listen to the show though, so you're all right. Yeah, she's busy uh, today. Uh, oh, god, oh my. we'll, we'll never keep the right thing. No, she she understands, doesn't she? she does. Well, she understands, you know. I'm uh, she does now, I'm a special one. Um, I will go for Chihuahua, says Chrissy, but would rather have a pug. Note to Jono, pug possible future yeah. week. I don't know what a pug would go against. Oh. oh, you could have a Yorkshire Terrier. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Yorkie. Yeah. Yorkie, they're quite popular, aren't they? They're little as well, aren't they? Miniature ones. Yeah. Poodles. Uh, you get miniature poodle. poodles. Poodle. Yorkie. Oh, I've written poogie. No, poodle. Pug. Pug. <laughs> Pug. <laughs> what was the other one? Yorkshire. Yorkie. Um. Anyway, back to today. If I had to pick between those two, says Steve, I'd go for the sedated, a sedated. Jack Russell Terrier. <laughs> That's a lot of work, though. You've got to get up early and sedate it, haven't you? <laughs> um, Jean's going Jack Russell, but I'm with Jeanette. Nappies as a question mark. They do do. Oh, right. The whole picking up their the doings, yeah. So permanent so nappy. Put them in a nappy, but no. Yeah. There, there is a dog poo hoover. I knew there'd be. You've just looked it up, haven't you? You're on the dark <laughs> web. No, you don't have to go on the dark web. There's also like a big like scoop thing on a stick that you can just scoop it up. With. <laughs> That's far, really. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if um is having pets such a good thing that you're promoting kind of I don't know, um a whole industry that I it's don't a know. Big, it's a big industry. It's a, it's a massive industry. They're great companions. They're fun. Um, some people don't don't have kids or don't want kids, mm. and actually, they're not always a replacement for children. But they're um, they're a good companion in people's lives, cats mm -hmm. or dogs. Um, but you know, um, you two are not bothered. So, no, well, uh, yeah, we get enough from people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people are around get... enough. Yeah, you can get a paddock cleaner as well. well I, I had that done on me a few years ago. As a procedure, <laughs> I will not be repeating, I can tell you, having my paddock cleaned. And, oh, uh, yeah, so you can get quite big poos up with that, I presume. A paddock cleaner? Yeah. Is like that horse? like a really big dog, a great dame? Or a horse. Or, oh, a, or horse. a horse. Yes, <laughs> a paddock, gives it away, yeah. I said horse, first of all. <laughs> I'd, yeah, but I'd use that on my tomatoes. That'd be nice. Not literally on them, like a sauce. Well, you, could, you, could, you could go round, hoover it up, and then put it on your tomatoes, couldn't you? They'd be strong, wouldn't they? That'd be good. Yeah. Um, so Jean's going Jack Russell. Wendy's saying, I've got a Petterdale Terrier, so I have to be Jack Russell for me. You know, Wendy, we wanted a Petterdale Terrier and decided it might be a bit too much for us. We met a gentleman while we was at Mersey Island Cudmore Grove, which is a park, sort of um, where you go for a nice walk with your dog. And he had a, a Patterdale, a lovely little Patterdale terrier that would only go to the toilet on his say so. Like Tom says, he likes them well trained. He, he'd say, "Go to the toilet now," and it would do it. And it was so well trained. Never known a dog to be like that, but great dog. Steve said, "I'd get a cat again if I could teach it to use the loo." You probably can, Steve. Try it try it yeah because it's a lot easier to train a cat than it is a dog <laughs> cats don't do they get trained i don't think so oh, i don't know i mean <laughs> well, you have to train them not to go inside don't you yeah well, yeah we to train yeah. yeah well we tr we trained our cat trained us i think that that way around <laughs> that worked for the cat thomas green says out of the two i'd have a jack russell hi thomas nice to see you we had a cavalier king charles toffee for a I year toffee. miss him dog. every day but dogs are a tie if you have a busy life they're true and if you want to travel a bit they are and mm. you can't take your dog that's difficult wendy says patterdales are a lovable but handful not for a first time owner bang on there and i Jean, don't even know what a patterdale looks like uh, look you'd look that up on the dark web later Jean says <laughs> i think i think they train guide dogs where to poo well uh, like the what? neighbor that doesn't you don't get on with <laughs> they find the poo in their garden. Any, anywhere but not your garden. On their veranda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the bonnet of their car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what Patterdale looks like now. It's a terrier. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. They're a nice dog, but they're they you know they need training, like Tom says. Um, I think maybe any kind of terrier, as like um, uh, what is it? Westies, and they kind of. Westies, that was another Terriers one. Terriers well, aren't they? Yeah, that's Graham Andrews' favourite dog. Yeah, West Highland Terrier, is it? Yeah, a lot of yeah. Terriers. Um, I would include my own little dog, but he's he's not an actual breed. Don't know what he is. 
he was dumped in a bag and a carrier bag and thrown in the bin with his sibling. Um, but you wouldn't know it apart from he doesn't like carrier bags and he doesn't. Um, he loves everything and everyone else, all dogs, all people. He cuddles your leg, he puts his paws, puts he his doesn't paws jump up, puts his paws around the back of your knee and rests his head on yeah. your knee, and it just melts me. He's the loveliest dog. And when he sits down or sort of partially lays down, he puts his legs like that. <laughs> I've never known a dog like it. Strange but beautiful thing. He's in the other room. In a minute, I'm going to be running out. <laughs> dog needs a wee. Dog needs a wee. <laughs> um, keep them coming. What would you vote for? Would you vote for the Yorkshire Terrier or the Chihuahua? Let us no, know. No, not, not Yorkshire Terrier. Jack oh. Russell or the Chihuahua. Stop. Can I just tell you, um, <laughs> my friend, I think I might have told you this before on the show, my friend Joe, Joe Weatherall, um, she married uh, an Austrian guy called uh, Patrick, and his surname was spelled A U E R, and that was pronounced Hour, Patrick Hour. And when they got married, and, and it was like years later, I said, Why have you still not changed your name? You're just staying as Joe Weatherall. And she said, Because if I took on his name, I would sound like a small dog, Joe Hour. <laughs> and that's what's making me think of that Chihuahua, Joe Hour. Um, <laughs> Wendy says, Watch out for the dog that grabs your leg. Not in that way, Wendy. I know. No, that. no, not I mean, like that. <laughs> not that. Mm, oh, I won't even, I can't do it in my hand. <laughs> I've not got enough. No. Anyway, keep the votes coming in. We're going to, we're going to invite Neve back on the show. I can see she's there. She's writing stuff down. No, she's not. She's smiling. <laughs> she's, she's going to be there. Yes. She's back. Do you have a favorite dog? Like magic. Do a favourite dog? Do you know what? I'm like not massively a dog person, but my favourite dog is um, and the one I would like to have because I absolutely love dog cat relationships. Like seeing dogs and cats like cohabitate is so lovely because yeah. like they shouldn't. Do you know what I mean? It's like against the animal kingdom. Um, is an oh. Italian greyhound. It's like it's like a mini yeah. greyhound essentially, and apparently they're like really gentle and I was like walk along the road one this um a couple of days ago and a guy had a cat on a lead and an Italian <laughs> greyhound on a lead. Excuse me, will you and marry they were, me? Like, having the best. <laughs> <laughs> they were having the best time ever. I loved it. So oh, that... I would like oh. that. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, so, so so interesting you saying that because my dogs um from Greece and it was a rescue and they thought that the people that rescued it thought it was part Italian greyhound. Oh, really? Well, mm. that might be where like the gentleness comes from. And apparently, their yeah. lap dogs are yes, Italian greyhounds. Totally, totally a lap dog and very fast as well. Yeah, okay. Fast. So that's the thing, right? You need to be like ready to take them on 700 walks a day. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, this one he doesn't mind if you let him lay down near you and give him the stroke yeah. of the belly and let the cat come and lick his ears or something. <laughs> I just love it, I love that. That's what I want. I want a house of cohabitating cats and dogs getting there we on, go. like I'm just on fire. We vote for that <laughs> this week. Um, so how long you've been making music? What, what sort of started getting you into it? Um, I can't, it's one of those things like probably have always kind of been doing it in some capacity that like, either like played at a bar at uni or um, you know yeah was doing it in my bedroom or whatever but um, I started like performing and writing and recording my second year in London Um I came here to do a master's um, and then finished and was kind of like I had like I got my first like office job my first like nine to five I was like god this is bloody boring is there <laughs> anything I can do after five that's gonna be fun and um, so I yeah just decided to gig a lot and the more I gigged the more I wrote the more I recorded the more I met people and um, so yeah like January 2019 I'd say was when I've written the bulk of the songs I now have put out and are, I'm putting out Wonderful. And um, you've got a very distinctive voice. Is there sort of who who inspired you when you were sort of growing into it? Amy Winehouse, completely. I always like um, I, I don't think I do it very well, but like I always want to like bring like jazzy elements into my music in some way or other. That's definitely a bit massive inspiration for me is jazz and the jazz world. Um, 
yeah, big fan of like Ella Fitzgerald growing up as well. And um, who else? Pillo Nutini. I love Pillo Nutini. Oh, he's, wow. he's great. He's from uh, Paisley, which is very yeah. close to Glasgow not, where I'm from. And, yeah. and a very soulful voice. I think, yeah, voices with sort of soul and substance and you can really kind of hear that. And yeah, the expressiveness. Loved Adele when I was like 15. Like all of her early albums were like, great um so yeah that that kind of soulful vibe definitely. you yeah, have no. so much versatility in your voice as well just having heard one song and just you know your range and everything it's beautiful it's really clever as well very clever ah thank you that definitely took a lot of time I, and i wouldn't even say it was like training it was more just like bravery of singing those notes yeah. like for so yeah. long i just like assumed i had a low voice and like i definitely actually don't like no. whenever I do backing vocals for people like I'm it's I'm the upper range now but it is that thing of like just kind of deciding what you are a bit too early on so yeah and I, I have an incredible habit of writing songs that are impossible to sing so <laughs> that's really good for the rest um, of us not for you <laughs> <laughs> it's good training anyway because it's like I've got what this one song called the house and recording that and playing that live it's a killer but it's good training yeah. <laughs> it's good yeah it's lovely to hear your influences and i can really uh they resonate with me too so it's lovely hearing and it's sort of like it grows your story even more not necessarily we follow the same roots as artists that have been before but they sort of inspire us to inspire us to write songs or to challenge our voice more so um good on you i want to go and hear more of your music though i think i've probably heard most of it already because i really like what you do um, what are you going to do now, Neith? Well, if you've heard most of my music, you'll hopefully recognise this one. Uh, I'm going to do a well, it's sort of oldie. Um, one that came out on my last EP. Um, last EP was called Currents. came out in yeah. November. Um, yeah, that was a big um, yeah breakthrough for me in my process and stuff. I took a lot more of like the production and the mixing duties on. and um, Yeah, I feel like really developed my sound uh, and really helped me kind of make my album anyway this is a song called a mother knows a mother knows from album. the wonderful neve ladies and gentlemen thank you i remember before it on the wall with low to whisper so and small i knew I didn't want to leave and you agree. Maybe I can, maybe I will. Maybe I'll come by this off to still low. Maybe I won't. Maybe I don't want to hold on to folks. My mother knew when I knocked on her door where the blood had gone. She said, my love, what's done is done. There's only love to come. There's only love to come. Oh, oh, oh. La, da, 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 di, da, di, oh, oh. I remember finding pictures of you two together right a little bit back home. I should have known I let myself inside a space with no one else. She found a home. Cause it might who knows. Maybe I can, maybe I will, maybe I'll come out of it. Soft is still low, maybe I won't, maybe I don't want to hold on to fall so My mother knew when I knocked on her door where the blood had gone. She said, my love, what's done is done, there's only love come, there's only love. To come, mother knows how I feel and what's important. Mother knows if I forget my 
accent. My brother knows how to tell a story, though he's too in my name. Feeling is not a week. Mother knows how to learn what's simple to me. Mother knows if I forget my accent. Mother knows how to tell all the stories that we used to remind me. My mother knew when I knocked on her door where the blood had gone. She said, My love, what's done is done. That's only love. There's only love to go. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Beautiful. Wonderful. Well played. Thank you. A mother does indeed know. <laughs> She does. She does. <laughs> really nice. I hope people would enjoy that out there. I hope you're having a nice time listening to the wonderful music of Neve. Um, and um, you've got sort of like stuff coming up this week. You were telling us before we come on the show. Do you want to fire us a little bit of information about that, please? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, my first song of the year, actually. So since the current, um, oh, current CP, I've yeah. been been like squirreling away lots of recording lots of behind the scenes stuff so this is the first um part of yeah my next project coming out which is my debut album wow. um and so yeah this is the first single off of it called seawall um yeah i really loved writing this i wrote it in lockdown and i don't know if you guys have seen or heard of the play called seawall which is um it stars andrew scott also known as sexy priest from Fleabag. Oh this yes, is other, yes. <laughs> this is other name. Um, <laughs> I didn't know by that name. <laughs> it's like yes, yeah, straight away. Yes, <laughs> I'd be the same. Um, but he had a play written for him called Seawall. Um, bloody devastating play. Very oh, sad. Yeah. A ha one half hour monologue. Um, and I saw it live. And then over lockdown, I think the National Theatre. I mean, actually, I think it was the Young Vic um, released him doing it in a rehearsal room online for free for everyone to watch. I kind of got to rewatch it. And I won't spoil anything about the plot, but like during the monologue, he um, keeps referring to this hole in his stomach. And um, he's like, yeah, I've just got this massive hole in my stomach. You can see all the way through, you know, try not to stare. I'm really sensitive about it. Anyway, I just love that concept. Um, and it kind of fed into the writing of the song in the end. It's kind of, um, yeah, really part of it. And that's how it got the name seawall and uh, i was really lucky to get some arts council england funding and funding from a couple of trusts fenton arts trust thank you hope scott trust thank you and um, so we got to create a lovely music video alongside it set in hastings featuring the sea a lot and an incredible dancer by an incredible cinematographer so all to say that's all out next week um on the 22nd of september thursday the 22nd of september you can hear it from uh, on the 20th, two days before, I'm playing at the Finsbury in North London with my band and two incredible support acts. Um, if you fancy coming along, it's free um, and you can get free, just you just reserve some free tickets off of Rentbike to come along. And then the week following, uh, the music video will be out. So, yeah, big couple of weeks coming up. A couple of weeks, fingers crossed That's that it goes great. great. Yeah, sure it will. Thank you. I hope so. And I'll play that as my last track today. So you'll get a little sneak peek. Oh. For real. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Well, we're going to do a little thing. Uh, Jeanette's poem of the week is coming up, but we'll be back after that for your last song. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the lovely Neve. It's a little something before the poem of the week, though, John. I don't forget it. Yes, of I'm course. Sure you wouldn't forget. <laughs> Jeanette, Jeanette. I'm trying to avoid, I'm trying to avoid doing that. You make me feel really self-conscious about doing sorry, that. But sorry, I also yeah. don't want you to forget. <laughs> No, well, I will because uh, I, I've just been noticing some comments on here. Wendy says, Jono, you need to listen to the funny things you've said on this program, giggling at I can't don't with my hand. I don't even know what I did then. Um, Christine says, my tortoise is from Greece. And Wendy think, says, is I he called Lightning? I think you were trying to do the dog thing on the dog, um, mimicking a dog um, wrapping itself around your leg. 
Uh, with your hands. The, way, the other way. Oh. Keith says, <laughs> not the other way, no. Uh, just reading the comments. Keith says, great show. Um, he's got a headache. It's reached Warp Factor 11. Hopefully catch you next time. Sending love to you, Keith. I know those migraines and headaches myself very well. When you get them, just go and lie down. You know, Look after yourself, Keith. Look after yourself, Keith. Yeah. Be well yeah. soon, my friend. Um, Jeanette, you are the adjudicator of the yeah. um, Small Dog of the Week. Tell us, tell us, do what wins the Small Dog of the Week the award? Winner is oh, big votes, big votes. Um, <laughs> Jack Rascal wins it. Where is that little Jackie yeah. Rascal? The Parsons Terrier, there he is. She is. I can't tell. No, I think it's he. <laughs> I could see some academicals there. Um, well done, little Jack Russell. My brother's got a Jack Russell. He never watches a show, but if he did, he'd be well pleased. <laughs> he doesn't do Facebook. There's a lot of people don't do Facebook nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, how is it for you out there? You know, do you, are you okay with the kind of like sound of things? Because I know it doesn't always come out perfect when it sort of goes through lots of systems does it still work for you coming live facebook every fortnight tell us do tell us don't it's up to you um we love having you with us as well as our special guests now we have poem of the week it's poem of the week it's sometimes short and sweet oh. it's poem of Always well, um, so this is quite a sombre poem, actually, because of the news this week. And it kind of, uh, it just made me think about the different things and, and kind of past family members and bits around that. Uh, this is a poem um, that is by Linda Ellis, and it's called The Dash Poem. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between the years. For that dash represents all the time that they spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. That was called The Dash Poem by Linda Ellis. I hope you like that. It does make you think, doesn't it, that, you know, from this date to that date, and I've seen that, you know, a lot with the Queen this week, 1926 to 2022, and that dash in between. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. It means a lot. It, it does mean, you know, yeah. what happens during that lifetime, however long or short. Yeah, it's that's a really interesting. I'm going to have to find that one out. You, if you could send me the link to that, I'm, I'm, yeah, that that moves me and uh, and and intrigues me because it's not just thinking about our lovely uh, hmm. Queen Elizabeth II who passed away. Uh, obviously this past week but sort of all the other people we've known and what lies in that dash yeah because yeah. it's just a pictorial thing because i see things i have to see a vision of it of it to know yeah. how it's going to look or how it's going to be um yeah it just made me think thank you so they much never put, that... they never put the word to do they no from this date to that day it's a dash and that was called the dash poem which yeah you know, you can apply it to anyone yeah it's nice well played it's lovely says uh gwendy thank you for all the giggles this afternoon lovely end to the week you're welcome wendy thanks for being with us um and she says beautiful poem thank you and it was and christine says lovely jeanette um, and it was you read them so well you are our jack and Ori for this current <laughs> generation aren't you you've revived yes them. i am yes i am i'm not mm. quite the um tom hardy other tom hardy that um read on Jack and Orion and apparently all the housewives all around the country <laughs> tuned in. Did they? Well, I didn't see oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't know you did that, Tom. Um, no, it was the other one, the not-so-lovely one. Yeah, but he talked more like that, didn't he? <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't watch. 
Ja, vi tænkte, det er det. Det er lidt ustående. Oh, ja. Um, I've seen a few of his films, he, he, but he, he's, he's always a bit rough and ready. Um, and I think that's why people like him, probably. I think he's gorgeous for being rough and ready myself. <laughs> um, Jeanette, uh, Jean says, thank you, Jeanette. You're very welcome. I, all the poems that I read out, they're, they're not mine. They're, they're just ones that I stumbled across and, and I like very much. And if I think they're uh, good enough to fit with the Warm and Toasty Club, then I will happily read them so if anybody's got any preferred ones they'd like me to read then do let us know yeah but you make you sorry i was going to say you make good choices really good choices thank you um, and <laughs> i you... look out for them all the time every time i see a poem and, and i really like it i screenshot it this particular one and um, this is on my phone <laughs> so okay. i just screenshot it when i like it so yeah that can be deleted now there we go. Oh, you don't have a special folder for all those poems you've ever written, read, because you've read, read. 106. <laughs> yeah, about 106 poems. <laughs> wow. There we go, um, folks. Hey, folks, thanks for being with us this afternoon. We've got Neve coming up now with her final song till we're done, but I really appreciate it because, you know, since the pandemic has eased off and we're back to normal living, kind of, um, to a degree we've gone fortnightly and thanks for hanging in there because i know we did it weekly right throughout the pandemic and that was great but i know it's sometimes people catching the time to join us summer nice weather um we really appreciate you doing so whether you watch us live or whether you watch it back later or you just listen to it like a podcast or a radio show we really appreciate it and we're thankful that you're there and it's so important for us and so pleasurable to connect to you so thank you Anyway, back to the show, and we have our special guest, Neve, coming back with a final song. Hi, Neve. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so where would people find you online? I did put up your Facebook page and your Bandcamp page. Are they the right ones to go to? Yeah, great. I mean, whatever um, platform you have, you can usually find me if you search Neve Music. Mm. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, very bad at Twitter, but I'm on I'm on there. Um and I've just started trying to do TikTok. Um whether <laughs> they're any good, I'm giving it a go. Um so yeah, you can find me if you search need music uh, on YouTube as well. And um, uh, yeah, remember Neve spelling yeah, spell her name. I spoke over uh, N double E V. Um wonderful. So you're gonna finish off with the final song this afternoon. Um what you what you got? You don't need to explain what it's about. I say this every week to artists. What have you got? But you know, it's just the way to sort of introduce it to the music. But you don't have to tell the story. Some people don't really like to tell the stories of their songs. They just like to sing them and let people make their own mind up. Yeah. Um, well, this is Seawall. This is the song that's uh, coming out. Um, so yeah, you've had a bit of a backstory to it. Um, yeah, but as you said, I'll leave the rest up to the listener. I always like. Um, people being able to decide what the song's about to them. It's a bit like with poetry, very similar. Um, yeah. yeah, this is Seawall coming out next Thursday. Brand new single from Neve, Seawall. Here we go. Let me get out of the way and let Neve do it. Thank you. I don't find it easy to look on the bright side I'm tired and wheezing, been running for miles And I know, oh, oh, that there's a hole oh, oh, Take no notice, take no hope Oh, well, I've been roaming around with gravity down, energy low what a way to exist but you've been polite ignoring this hole he said slow down and i said no he said don't burn both ends of the candle i can't hide but i can run the earth will pull me back at once and i will hit the sea wall If I were a heartbeat, somewhere heavy to lay, the 
This uneven feeling wouldn't terrify me as much as it does, but I know that there's a hole. Take no notice, take no oh, oh. Well, I've been roaming around gravity down, energy low. What a way to admit that I might break down if I don't judge. Go. He said, slow down, and I said, no, he said, don't burn both ends of the candle. I can't hide, but I can't run. The earth will pull me back at once, and I will hit the sea. Oh, if it's not in my lungs. And it's not in my blood I can't remember all the things that I have given up If it's not in my hands, it's not something I can plan This isn't something I'd expect for you to understand If it's not in my blood, then it's not in my lungs I can't remember all the things that I have given up If it's not in my hands, it's not something I can plan This isn't something I'd expect for you to understand Understand well, I've been roaming around, gravity down, energy low. What a way to exist, but I might break down if I don't just go. He said, slow down, and I said, no, he said, don't burn both ends of the candle. I can't hide, but I can't run the earth, will pull me back at once. And I will hit the sea. Oh, 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 oh. Well played, Neve. Cheers. That was so lovely. That, it felt like water as well, the kind of gentleness of it, like lapping waves. Really nice. Oh, nice. That's good. Please in. Everything. Yeah. Oh, thank you very a, much for having me. I've it's been a time. pleasure. I was just going to say it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. You're uh, not only a talented singer and, and musician, you're bright as a button, very intelligent and interesting. And that's a lovely thing. It's a great package as a person that you've got. <laughs> <laughs> you're a highly qualified person. You're like a human being. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no way. What? One of the on you're fun and everything. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Good news. Good, Good feedback. News. Thank you. <laughs> do you record your music in the room you're in? I do. Yeah, it's a new, relatively new thing. And um, my flatmate moved out. My partner moved in, so I've got a spare room now. Um, yeah. So this is where the very like it's so funny talking about it. Like, yeah, I record it all at my room, and it's all like massively boring. It's just me playing the same guitar riff nine times and swearing under my breath um but yeah i recorded probably like 70 percent of the album in here and Good then things like drums in the studio and then we did one track all live which is really fun in the studio that's great nice there's someone that does it myself at home um i i'm all for the diy's the ethic ethic is that the word? yes it's good it's good to do i think for every yeah. musician it's easy as well give it a go um, thanks for being on our show. It's been lovely. We wish you a brilliant week and a brilliant yes, coming up period with all of your new stuff. Hope it goes exceedingly well. And Thank hopefully you. we can get you back on the show in the new year. Yeah, anytime. Brilliant. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. The wonderful Neve. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Neve. Cheers. Bye, Eve. Oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's time for the end of the show. Here comes the outro. It's just up to me, Jono, to thank the wonderful Jeanette Lyons, the marvellous Tom Hardy, and thanks you lot for being with us and for the National Lottery Community Fund for supporting what we do. We'll be back in two weeks with more mischief, mayhem and music, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Have a good couple of weeks. Be well. Bye. Thanks very much. Thanks to Neve. See you soon. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. We've all got a tale to tell Times were not always so But putting it all aside We made it through by
by and by It's warm and toasty in here Share our laughter, sometimes tears You'll be welcome with a cup of tea And a biscuit, maybe two or three Wrapped in a little white cloth Cooking for hours in the old iron pot There's a jam roly-poly for tea Enough for you and dad and grandma and me What did we like the most? Fish paste sandwich Or peas on toast Nothing could come close To bubble and squeak The day after our sun 